Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Disney songs that didn't have to go that hard. For this list, we'll be looking at the most epic, catchy, or intense tracks from the studio's films that had no business being so good. However, we're excluding tunes from Pixar and live-action movies, since those deserve lists of their own. Which of these songs always blows your mind? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. I'm Still Here, Jim's Theme, Treasure Planet Treasure Planet is definitely one of the more underrated Disney flicks out there, but anyone who isn't super familiar with it, and this single specifically, has been missing out. And what do you think you'd ever say? I won't listen. I'm Still Here is all about life, growth, perseverance, and being yourself. And it isn't also called Jim's theme for nothing. Playing over a sequence of events, it aptly speaks to our protagonist's experiences and inner journey. Even when you remove it from the context of the story, though, it remains a certified pop rock banger. The music and lyrics come together seamlessly, speaking to the angsty adolescent experience with honesty and nuance, and they do so in a way that's sure to get any listener vibing. If that's not praiseworthy, we're not sure what is. Number 19. Why Should I Worry? Oliver and Company Much like Treasure Planet, Oliver and Company is often overlooked, but considering everything the film has going for it, we struggle to see why. Why Should I Worry, the introduction to all things Dodger, perfectly encapsulates what we mean. For one thing, it's sung by the piano man himself, Billy Joel, and he does not disappoint. His rendition couldn't be more spot on, putting the dog's savvy, easygoing personality on display. Plus, the number itself is snappy, oozing confident New York City energy and convincing us we need more Dodger in our lives. Why should I worry? Why should I care? You may not have a dime, but I got three south The reprise at the end of the movie, for its part, is just the cherry on top creating a lovely full circle moment. We needn't worry as long as this tune's around. The rhythm of the sense, but once you get it down, that you can own this town, you gotta know where to fly. Number 18, This Is Halloween, The Nightmare Before Christmas. How many places out there do you know that greet you with a musical number? Based on how mind-blowing This Is Halloween is, we think the answer is not nearly enough. This is Halloween, everybody make a scene, trick or treat. Tell the neighbors gonna die of fright. It's our town, everybody scream. This town of Halloween. It's spooky yet uniquely enjoyable, and never fails to draw us into the story by throwing us into its quirky main setting while spotlighting the residents. The piece gets us scared and wondering whether we could find a way to actually move to Halloween Town at the same time. After all, life's no fun without a good scare. Run that corner man hiding in the trash cans and things waiting at a punch and pound. Hey, this is Halloween! Red and black! And bloody green! Aren't you scared? Well, that's just fine! Okay, we know living there isn't a real option, but honestly, we're content just playing this thrilling hit on repeat because it makes us feel like honorary inhabitants. Everyone hail to the pumpkin song! <laughs> Number 17, Colors of the Wind, Pocahontas. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? 
This ballad sure makes us want to. It may not be loud or flashy, but it's powerful in its reflective quality and sends a relevant message about how humans are one with the Earth. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. The way it encourages not just John Smith but everyone watching to shift their perspective and embrace the natural world is striking. We also need to take a minute to praise Judy Kuhn's awe-inspiring majestic vocals. They're flawless. Pair all of that with a gripping melody in the scene's gorgeous animation, and we really feel how alive nature is through Colors of the Wind. No wonder it won a Golden Globe, a Grammy, and an Oscar. You can own the earth and still all you'll own is earth until you can paint with all the colors of the wind. Number 16. You're Welcome, Moana Moana is one of those movies where each song feels wonderfully distinct. One thing they have in common, though, is that they're all absolute bops. We could have easily gone with how far I'll go for this list, but in terms of showmanship, flair, and overall entertainment value, no number goes quite as hard as You're Welcome. I see what's happening, yeah. You're face to face with greatness and it's strange. You don't even know how you feel. It's adorable. We're totally here for Demigod Maui's cocky ode to, well, himself. It's just so exciting. It's like Dwayne Johnson was born to sing these words, and boy does he commit. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. And the tapestry here in my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been, I make everything happen. Look at that me, mini Maui. <laughs> Is Maui merely distracting Moana with his fire singing and rapping skills and amazing moves? Yes, 100%. But we aren't mad at it. The distraction is too good. And thank you! Number 15. I Won't Say I'm In Love, Hercules. Is there anything more relatable than being scared of love and letting someone in because you've been burned in the past? Megara knows that struggle all too well, but the romance that's developing between her and Hercules is undeniable, much to her dismay. No man is worth the aggravation. That's ancient history, been there, done that. So what can she do except deliver a spellbinding ballad about the whole thing? I Won't Say I'm In Love is raw, real, and true to Meg's layered personality. Balancing feelings like pride, love, and fear, it tells an authentic story that hits hard. It feels so good when you start out. My head is screaming, get a grip, girl. Unless you're dying to cry your heart out. We challenge anyone to get through Susan Egan's alluring performance without being moved. To top it all off, the inimitable Muse's backup contributions make the already outstanding number all the more so. At least out loud, I won't say I'm in love. Number 14. Friends on the Other Side, The Princess and the Frog if you want to be transported to New Orleans with songs that absolutely slap, just press play on The Princess and the Frog. The 2009 flick has many tracks that get us grooving, like Almost There. But we want to shine a light on Dr. Facilier's villain number. You're in my world now, not your world. And I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. That's an echo, gentlemen. Just a little something we have here in Louisiana. As much as we know Prince Naveen and Lawrence shouldn't be doing business with the shady witch doctor, we understand how he lures them in. After all, we're practically hypnotized by the jazzy tune's instrumentation, imposing lyrics, and Keith David's next level delivery. I can read your future. I can change it around some too. 
I look deep into your heart and soul. You do have a soul, don't you, Lawrence? Make your wildest dreams come true. Those friends on the other side end up becoming Facilier's worst nightmare, but we're glad he was on their good side long enough to give us this dramatic solo. I hope you're satisfied. But if you ain't, don't blame me. You can blame my friends on the <laughs> Number 13, Under the Sea, The Little Mermaid. Darling, it's better down where this bubbly track is blasting. Take it from us. At this point in the movie, Sebastian believes that Ariel belongs under the sea, and he's not afraid to sing their home's praises to persuade her. Since life is sweet here, we got to be here naturally. Naturally, eat, 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 the sturgeon and the ray. Did it the earth start to play? We got to hear it, you got to hear it under the sea. She doesn't really listen, but we do. He has us tapping our toes, nodding our heads, and losing ourselves in the music. We can't even be insulted by the low opinion the crab seems to have of life on land, because he pleads an insanely strong case. Howard Ashman and Alan Menken more than understood the assignment when creating the song, as did Samuel E. Wright, who went all out in his performance. Satisfying, lively, and glorious, this award-winning number will never get old. Number 12, Let It Go, Frozen. After accidentally unleashing her ice powers in front of everyone, Elsa runs away. The situation is dire to be sure, but she's also finally free to be herself. And she doesn't just sing, she belts her heart out. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go, let it go. The song builds into a powerful anthem is stunning. Elsa infuses each lyric with vigor and confidence, finally finding her voice in more ways than one. Here I stand, and all I love We're so glad she does because it's simply impossible not to sing along. And that moment where she releases her cape, we still haven't been able to let it go. Thankfully, Elsa's ability to deliver a strong and emotional ballad that wrecks us all remains in the sequel, too. Don't you know there's part of me that loves to go? Into the end. Number 11, I'll Make a Man Out of You, Mulan. We always find ourselves bawling when Mulan gets vulnerable with the soul-stirring reflection. But just when you think the songs can't slay any harder, Li Shang comes in swinging with I'll Make a Man Out of You. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. The training the troops undergo is no joke, but the track's cadence, tempo, and tough love energy keep the sequence feeling fresh and energizing. As if all that wasn't enough on its own, the whole number also feels extra clever within the context of the story. After all, Mulan is quite literally not a man. You're free. How could I make a man out of you? If these soldiers weren't motivated before, they certainly are after hearing this exciting tune. It definitely never fails to get us pumped. With all the strength of a raging Whoa! fire, mysterious Whoa! as the dark Whoa! side of the moon. Number 10, Hellfire, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's pretty clear from the moment we meet Claude Frollo that he's basically the worst person ever. But the movie clearly wanted to really drive that point home, because Hellfire takes things to a whole new level. This burning desire is turning me to The glimpse it gives us into his mind is, in a word, 
frightening. And the way it's framed around righteous and holy themes only makes it that much more captivating. The song isn't scary in a tame way where only children are spooked. On the contrary, it feels more twisted and terrifying as you get older, because that's when you grasp just how creepy and dark it is. Destroy Esmeralda and let her taste the fires of hell, or else let her be mine and mine alone. You'd never guess such a chilling number would appear in a Disney movie, which is exactly why it's so unforgettable. Choose me or your be mine or you will go. Number 9. Be Prepared – The Lion King A plot to violently take over the kingdom from your brother and his son wouldn't be complete without a musical number where you gather an army. Just ask Scar. We were not prepared for how horrifying his song would be, but that made hearing it for the first time even better. And whenever we revisit it, which is very often, we're amazed by how it continues to send shivers up and down our spines. Of course, quid pro quo, you're expected to take certain duties on board. Everything from the pointed lyrics to the military-style visuals to the intimidating beat is nightmare fuel in the best way. Be Prepared is menacingly mesmerizing, and we love it as much as we hate what it's promoting. That's the kind of impact a top-notch villain tune can have. Be king undisputed, respected, saluted, and seen for the wonder I am. Yes, my teeth and ambitions are bad. Be prepared. Number 8. Be Our Guest – Beauty and the Beast If only every dinner party had a refined candelabra named Lumiere who could put on a show for the ages. Course by course, one by one, till you shout, This dazzling track makes us want to try the gray stuff. Despite its less than appetizing appearance, what can we say? It sets a beautifully glamorous table that's too good to pass up. After all, the delightful and welcoming lyrics are nothing if not persuasive. You're alone and you're scared, but the banquet's all prepared. No one's gloomy or complaining while the flatware is entertaining. The exhilaratingly rich melody also never ceases to charm us. Everything about Be Our Guest is downright riveting. It's been over three decades since audiences were first introduced to the song, yet every time we hear it, it feels like the first. We would gladly accept an invite from Lumiere, Cogsworth, Mrs. Potts, and the rest of the gang any day of the week. Bravo! Number 7. Friend Like Me, Aladdin If we're being honest, the entire Aladdin soundtrack goes way harder than it needs to. One Jump Ahead is full of excitement, while A Whole New World takes us on a romantic ride across the sky. But no song in the movie is as catchy or melodic as Genie's Friend Like Me. You got some punch to dance! Yo, who and how, see, all you gotta do is rub that lamp. That's not a shock. Considering the character, who's voiced by the late, great Robin Williams, is among the most sensational we've ever seen. The fun number is filled with charm and clever references, and its high-energy beat is sure to get you moving. Can your friends do this? Can your friends do that? Can your friends pull this out their little hand? A magical genie is good, but a magical genie who can deliver an electrifying performance? That's even better. Everything Williams touched turned to gold, and this song was no exception. You ain't never had a like Number 6. We Don't Talk About Bruno, Encanto just seeing this song's title is enough to get us humming, because it's that mind-blowingly snappy. The number pulls double duty by finally answering our questions about Bruno, while simultaneously making us dance our butts off. What a joy you stay, but anyway, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. 
The beat, the lyrics, and the narrative blend together in the most epic of ways. Plus, the different verses are not only amazing, but they're perfectly tailored to the people singing them. Yeah, he sees your dreams. He's so among us hasn't tried to master all the different parts. We can't help but wonder, though, what kind of song would this have been if the Madrigals did talk about Bruno? We get a taste at the end after they reconcile, but we hope there'll be a sequel with more Bruno-tastic tracks. Yeah, there's a lot to say about Bruno. I start, okay. Number 5, Zero to Hero, Hercules. Hercules would be a lot less exuberant without the muses, as these witty chorus members do a lot more than plainly explain what's going on. Just look at how they set the scene for the story. We'll take it from here, darling. You go, girl. But they really outdo themselves with Zero to Hero, showing us Hercules finding fame and glory. Oh, yeah! We all know they would never phone such an important moment in, but we weren't anticipating such a wonderfully spirited tune. They spare no metaphorical expense to paint a vivid picture of Herc's climb to the top. The song is fast-paced, animated, dynamic, and full of life. Plus, the vocals are unbelievably strong, and the track's vibrant energy is unbeatable. If you ask us, the muses are the real heroes. Yes, Cindy. Number 4, Eye to Eye, a Goofy Movie. A Goofy Movie pulls out all the stops for the Powerline concert, giving us what might just be one of the most iconic performances ever. I got myself a notion. We know the story is about Goofy and his son Max, but the fictional superstar steals the show with Eye to Eye, and we're certainly not complaining. The song feels like something out of our pop dreams. The chorus gets stuck in our heads, the beat is infectious, and Powerline's voice is dreamy. It's no wonder Max and his classmates are such fans. Can't you just imagine a classic boy band or solo heartthrob like original singer Tevin Campbell covering it today? Speaking of which, we wonder if any of them would be interested in recording it, because we'll never get tired of hearing the tune. Number 3, Poor Unfortunate Souls, The Little Mermaid. Ursula lives for the drama, and while we can't condone her dishonest actions, we also can't deny the fact that we live for this song. They come flocking to my cauldron crying, spells Ursula please, and I help them. Yes, I do. Ariel is in such a vulnerable state at this point that she would have likely ended up signing the contract without this very compelling pitch. But what fun would that be? Our sassy sea witch is a star who commands the room, and she truly shines while singing her tentacles out. Both creepy and enticing, her number puts you under an entrancing spell. Come on, you How could anybody possibly resist its theatrical refrain and spectacularly deceptive lyrics? They're the stuff of award-winning records. Ursula may collect poor, unfortunate souls, but we feel very fortunate that this sinister song exists. Number 2, You'll Be In My Heart, Tarzan. Phil Collins, We Bow Down. The Tarzan soundtrack elevates the story in every respect, with each extraordinary song encompassing its themes. Two Worlds expertly sets up the central tension between the animal and human worlds. Strangers Like Me exemplifies what Tarzan feels as he learns more about the latter, but no track gets us more than the Oscar-winning You'll Be In My Heart. Come stop your crying, it'll be all right. Just take my hand, hold it tight. 
It's a masterful musical representation of Kala's bond with her adoptive human son and drives home the way she'll do anything to keep him safe. Comforting from start to finish, it makes us feel as loved and protected as Tarzan. Plus, it's breathtaking from a songwriting perspective. Needless to say, the gentle ballad really has a way of staying with us. You'll be here in my heart always. Always. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Mother Knows Best, Tangled. Gothel may be evil, but her song is utterly convincing. Skip the drama, stay with mama. Mother knows best. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, Cinderella. Cinderella's fairy godmother proves she's a musical icon. Now Sanagadula means a menchikabula roo, but the thing I'm about that does the job is Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Part of your world, The Little Mermaid. We can't imagine our world without this banger in it. When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love, love to explore that shore up above? Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians. A short but iconic and revealing ditty. The world was such a wholesome place until Cruella, Cruella de Vil. The Bare Necessities, The Jungle Book. This song is the only thing we need. Forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities. That's why a bear can rest at ease with just the bare necessities of life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Circle of Life – The Lion King On the surface, The Lion King is a story about, well, lions. But there's a lot more depth to it. And Circle of Life makes that fact abundantly clear from the beginning of the movie. Before a single character has even uttered a word, this song's beautiful Zulu lyrics kick things off, firmly placing us in Africa. Its wise lesson and heavenly music further get us ready for what's to come. The track's reassuring message that we're all part of a powerful collective cycle that transcends the individual is nothing short of inspiring. It goes without saying, but Elton John and Tim Rice went way above and beyond the call of duty when crafting this musical masterpiece. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.